How about we listen to a little R.W. Shambach today? Stay tuned. Hi, you are with Donna Shambach and Power Connection. Welcome, especially if this is your very first time hearing and watching. Welcome all those who are listening by podcast. Today I have something very special for every one of our partners and friends and regular viewers. We're going to air one of my favorite series over the next couple of weeks of my dad preaching. And he loved to talk about the end time army of God that was on fire. In fact, the message that he's preaching is all about Peter. Sometimes we may think that people have fallen away or are not as interested or maybe they're filled with fear and that God can't use them. Well, I love how my dad takes the story of Peter at the fire, under fire, and on fire, and how he was raised up to do the works of Christ and help to turn the world upside down. Go with us now and listen to R.W. Schambach, Peter at the fire, under fire, and on fire. Father, let the anointing rest upon these words today and plant them into our hearts and prepare us for the greatest harvest that the world has ever seen. In the name of Jesus, Every trace of fear, doubt, and unbelief to vanish as faith comes alive in every heart. Let this be a day of receiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shouted amen. amen. Peter, now I was reading scriptures concerning Peter. He was chosen by God. He was one of the twelve. But he was in a closer circle with three, Peter, James, and John. And yet, Peter failed. He denied Jesus three times. Jesus told him that he would. But he said, oh, no, not me, Lord. You're talking to Pete. I'm the rock. (laughs) Maybe John will. Maybe one of the others, but you're talking to Peter. But it was Peter who is now compromising. And he's at the fire. Why was he here? It was an evil company, but Peter was there following at a distance. He departed just when Jesus needed him the most. He was in the shadow, followed him at a distance. He had a partial knowledge, but he had no experience with Christ's teachings about the cross. And how many times did Jesus tell him that he was manifested in the flesh for one reason, and that was to die on Calvary. Oh, the Jews didn't kill him. The Roman soldier's spear didn't kill him. But Jesus said this one thing I received of my father. He gave me power to lay my life down. And he gave me power to take it back up again. Jesus died a voluntary death. For you and for me, he took our place on Calvary so that we can have the full knowledge of what took place. Peter was sleeping when Jesus went into the garden to pray. Peter, James, and John, he told them, wait here, and they were asleep. They followed afar off. When they came to arrest Jesus, Peter took his sword out and cut the ear off of one of the men. Jesus picked the ear up and put it back on again. This is Peter, fleshly demonstrations. Now he's identified 
with the enemies of Christ. And now he's at the fire, but now he's under fire. And I want you to know this is the time when the church is under fire. There's a world out there that hates Christianity. We were talking, Marsh and I were talking this morning about 9-11 that took place in New York City, the World Trade Center. They had a United Nations there, just like we have here. I don't know how many nations were represented that lost lives at that World Trade Center. But this was an attack against the body of Christ. The devil hates Jesus. Now, I come to declare it boldly, and I declare it boldly on television, Mohammed is not the way. <laughs> Buddha is not the way. Hari Hari Krishna is not the way. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Don't get mad at me. I didn't say it. Jesus is the one that said it. And I was so grateful back in 1958 when my third child was born. That was Bruce. I was in India at the time, in southern India. And I was preaching in a little city called Tirvala. And I was preaching the noonday service and there were 50,000 people that were assembled there on that compound for a noonday service. Just like here, you have a crowd of people in a morning service. People that are hungry for God. Now, I went over about a week early. I passed out circlers myself. I went into the marketplace. I gave them to the crippled. I gave them to, the, to those that were sick, those that were begging for alms, those that had crooked limbs, those that couldn't walk, those that were blind. And there they were. And I put a circular in their arms, in their hands, and I gave them a personal invitation to come. To the service. Now I used to pastor a church in western Pennsylvania. It's when I first met Morris. When I pastored that church. And we supported a missionary. From India. And there in India. He told me. He said brother Shambach. We entertained him in our home. In the parsonage. He said, I've been there for 20 years and I've never seen one Mohammedan come to Christ. And I couldn't wait to go to India. Now, it's not the bad mouth the missionaries. Jesus said some plant, some come in water, but it's God who gives the increase. So we went over there and I'll never forget that crowd of people, 50,000 people. And I love to tell this story. And when I finished preaching, my interpreter was a little man who spoke Malayalam. And you're at the mercy of your interpreter. Because you can't understand their language and you pray and hope that he's saying what you say. And I gave an altar call and out of 50,000 people... Not one person came to receive Christ as their Savior. I try to fathom that. Not one. I said, what are you going to do now? I ain't done yet. God said he would accompany the word with signs following. And if I'm faithful to preach the word, then I have a right to expect that God is going to perform signs and wonders and miracles. And I'd like to encourage every one of you, men and women, that when you speak the word of God, don't end there. But God said he will accompany that with signs following. 
you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name you shall cast out devils. So I picked out of the audience a blind man and a deaf mute. And I'll never forget, everybody, they didn't leave. They stayed. I said, I'm not finished. Now God's going to perform miracles through the name of Jesus. I said, I didn't come here to badmouth your religion. In India, they worship everything. Isn't that right, brother? They worship everything. I saw 20,000 people around the stump of a tree. And I said to the man driving, what, what are those folks gathered for? They're worshiping their God. I said, who's their God? It's that tree stump. They worship everything. And I come to preach Christ. I didn't come to badmouth their religion. And I preached Jesus, gave an invitation, and nobody came. But now we're going to demonstrate it. And I laid hands on, I think it was the deaf mute first, put my finger in the ears, the thumb on the tongue, and I rebuked the deaf and dumb spirit, commanded it to come out in the name of Jesus. And I spent 15 minutes with that gentleman, and I had him speaking perfect English. He could hear and he could talk. God loosed his tongue and opened his ears. Now I have a captive audience. They brought a blind woman. I laid hands on her in the name of Jesus. Commanded the blind eyes to see. And instantly she opened her eyes and started running. She jumped off the platform and ran through the people shouting in her tongue, I can see, I can see, I can see. This gospel that we preach is accompanied with power. Now I, I, I brought, I had him bring a, a woman who was a hopeless cripple who never stood upright in a vertical position. 58 years of age, she walked on the heel of her hand and the heel of her foot in a horizontal position. They brought her up on the platform. And my little interpreter, I'll never forget him. I said, now I am going to pray for this woman in the name of Mohammed. My interpreter looked at me and said, oh, no, 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 brother, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Oh, I said, please, brother. I said, I'm going to give Mohammed equal time. I didn't come to India to badmouth the religion, so since many of them worship Mohammed, then I, I'm going to pray in the name of Mohammed. Now, I knew Muhammad couldn't hear me because everybody visits his grave. His grave. They go on a Mecca to, to see Muhammad's remains. But that's the difference between Muhammad and Jesus. We have an empty tomb. He is no longer there. Jesus is alive and he's doing today what he did yesterday. And he said, the works that I do shall you do also. But not only these works shall you do, but greater works shall you do because I go to my Father. And we are living in the greater works era now. Hallelujah. God's giving a new kind of faith, a new kind of anointing to every one of his people to do the greater works that's going to reap the greatest harvest that the world has ever known. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap, everybody. I hope you are hearing the message, you have God's hand on you. If you are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, you have been anointed to make a difference right now in the end times in which we're living. God wants to set you on fire. And I know, listen, we live in a, in a day and age when the enemy is hurling things at us, all kinds of lies and deceptions to keep us bound up in fear. But I'm going to come against that right now in the name of Jesus. If you want to be set on fire by the power of the Holy Ghost, just lift your hands toward heaven. I'm going to agree with you. Father, I thank you for this one that is watching. 
Lord, if they don't know you, I pray that as they humble themselves before you, they will make everything right with you and become your child and your servant, Lord. Father, for everyone who knows you and is filled with the Holy Spirit, I ask you that you would bring a fresh baptism of fire. I ask you, Lord, that you'd ignite them with a holy passion everywhere they go. Let them look for those that need a touch from Jesus. And Lord, I even pray that you'd ignite their prayer life, that as they're praying and interceding, Lord, they'd begin to see the kingdom of heaven come right here on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you for it, Lord. I ask you that as we pray and as we exercise that anointing, that you would accompany it with signs following. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm so glad you tuned in today, but listen, don't forget to stop by our website, check out all of our resources, and stay tuned for next week, and we're going to finish this message, Peter at the fire, under fire, and on fire. God bless you. I'm so happy you could join us today on Power Connection. Please stay connected with Shambach Ministries. Make sure you check out our website. I'd love you to also look into being part of our Shambach School of Ministry, especially if you feel a call on your life. And please help us get the word out to others. Make sure you like us, subscribe, and ring that bell. And that way you'll help us reach so many more people with the truth of the scripture. And don't forget, when you go to that website, sow your best gift into Shambach Ministries today. We'll see you next time.